So this one here oh, is wow. very, very interesting because we got to give a little bit of a background. So in in the bottom part, you see Quran chapter 65, verse 4. Now this verse talks about the idda, meaning the period where women can't remarry after a divorce. Uh, so they know that if they're pregnant or not, right? But the idda, this waiting period, is only applicable if the marriage was consummated, as in another place in Surah Ahzab. Now, in this verse, it says, it talks about women who have their periods. And it says, for women who have no courses, i.e., they are still immature, their idda is also three months. Remember that idda is only applicable if you consummate the marriage. And when you're applying an idda to girls who haven't had their periods because they're too young, you're also implying that you can have consummation with prepubescent children, right? Now, this is not me making this up. If you look on the top left side, Imam Bukhari interprets this exact verse to mean, literally, he takes the verse, and he inserts the verse, and then he says that this is about the three-month idda of the kids before puberty, before adolescence. So he's being explicit, and he uses the marriage of Aisha to Muhammad at the age of six and consummation at nine to think that, okay, this fits the prepubescent uh, sexual intercourse criteria. This is uh, surprising. I haven't read this. Um, like, I, I didn't notice this before, this, this part in Arabic. It's interesting that it's not translated, right? I mean, unless it's giving one's young children in marriage, but that, that, that misses the part before adolescence or before you know they, mm -hmm. they right that part it's not literally yeah. there. Mm -hmm. and I, I posted a link um i posted a link in the comments that has a little bit of a you know goes into a little bit more detail on this wall 65 4 and gives references to the tafsir um talking about basically there's, there's two opinions here uh muslim some some muslims will say that 65 4 is talking about mm -hmm those who can no longer menstruate meaning when you divorce a woman that has a that has no more period this is what you do but the tafsir makes it clear that this was the gut and even the as um asbabul nuzul the the reason for revelation is recorded that basically someone came to muhammad and said like in the case of me marrying a woman that has not yet had you know a period what how do i divorce her what's the waiting period so it's clear from the hadith that this is and the, and the tafsir that this is regarding um a woman not not an old woman that doesn't have periods but a, like a a child basically right and if in if you look on the right side top right that screenshot is from uh w's history the 40 volume work and i think this is from volume eight and somebody himself writes as for Aisha, when he married her, she was very young and not yet ready for consummation. So this is Tabari, who was a 10th, he died in like 923 or something, 921, something around that year. And he is saying that, no, Aisha was too young when she was married to Muhammad. He was too young for consummation, meaning she's prepubescent. And- But she's old enough to be a wife. Hmm? They're talking about when she was six. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which is why he waited. This I is what some people say. I don't know how he determined that six was too young and nine was okay. That's weird. Like, <laughs> exactly. Like, how is this is something we have to get a uh, talk about too, where there's this weird perception in the in these Muslim apologist circles that as soon as you start bleeding, it's like a switch you turn from a child to an adult. <clears throat> It, it doesn't work like That's that. That's not how it works. There are so many phases and so many developmental stages in the human body has to go through, right? And he actually, we'll talk about maternal mortality later as well. <clears throat> Let's go to the next slide. Ooh. This is about the infamous dolls Aisha used to play with. And Aisha also playing with children. 
Now, what's disgusting about this is that if you look on the left side is the, the name of the chapter. It says children and subchapter says stroking a child's head. And it's talking about when Aisha used to already be with Muhammad and she used to play with dolls, right? And not only does it mention that, it said that when her friends would come over, Aisha used to play with other kids. They would hide from Muhammad so the kids would see Muhammad and run away because they were probably scared of what he was doing to their friend Aisha. They're terrified. Right? <laughs> and there's some other hadith where he would come in, they would run out, and he would run, he would go out and they would run away into the house from him. Uh, I don't know if we can imply that they were scared of him. I mean, I I like I know a lot of young kids would run away because they're shy or because, you know, it could be the culture where, you know, they don't feel comfortable because there's an adult, adult, <laughs> an adult mm -hmm. man coming in the room. So they want to, the kids, they're going to run away. They're going to hide. Doesn't mean they're necessarily scared of him. Mm -hmm. um, but unless, unless you think that is implied here, uh, that they were hiding from him because they were scared. <laughs> Because no, no, not directly. Like, it sounds like he he called them and they played with they played with him too. So, you mm. know how romantic he's playing with kids. He's playing with <laughs> friends, his playmates. He's playing with his playmates. Uh, see, that's the thing. It's not implied at all, like you said, but it's kind of like disgusting that he's playing with the same <laughs> children. Oh, it's just gross, honestly. <laughs> <Yeah>. On the <laughs> right side, though. Uh, one thing I want to point out is in the footnotes, in the brackets, it says that the playing with the dolls and similar images is forbidden, but it was allowed for Aisha at that time as she was a little girl not yet reached the age of puberty. So this is from Hajar al-Asqalani in Fath al-Bari. Now this guy is a leading commentator, uh, this uh, scholar of hadith, and he says that after consummation, she still, when she was with Muhammad playing with dolls, she still had not reached the age of puberty. And he's saying that he's implying it from his own deduction. So that is a very Again, regarding her at six, not necessarily nine, right? No, this is nine because she's in the presence of the prophet and she used to go and all that. And this continued because you'll come to some other hadith where she then says years, a few years that even after that she was an immature girl. Okay. Next slide. Do you want to say something about the playing with dolls? I mean, I uh, I don't know any mature women playing with dolls. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I mean, I could always find like exceptions to the rule, but generally, when yeah, you think about of course, dolls, there's exceptions, but uh, no, <laughs> there's just no. Uh, why would they preserve this detail? What do they want to demonstrate about Aisha? Yeah, that she's a kid. Right? She's right? playing with kids. She's playing with, she's dolls. Playing with dolls. They just want to reinforce that. Do we see child. some uh, some other women in Arabian culture that were very old and mature and that playing with dolls was used as a, a trait to show their maturity? Was Aisha playing with dolls with other wives? That's actually a very good question. <laughs> was Aisha playing with dolls with other wives of Muhammad? Probably not, because they were old and taking care of stuff. <laughs> they had adult things to do. Oh, man. You want to just address this comment? Uh, guys, please try to understand there's nothing wrong with early marriage 1400 years ago. Uh, as Abdullah Gondal was saying, there was actually, this was not actually like this huge age discrepancy is probably the most extreme like example of age discrepancy with with like a nine year old and a, how old was he in 54 his... at consummation yeah. yeah so it's it's like it's quite an extreme ex, you know discrepancy and even if it was okay back then the point is we're pointing out that this is not okay period and the fact that muhammad did it if he did it and and this is why we, you know abdul gondal is bringing all of this evidence to show that she was indeed actually a child for a grown man to marry a child that plays you know and this is all the evidence that we're showing this is a problem this is actually an issue right so that's that's why we're, we're highlighting this not 
you know, we understand that this was a common thing back then. But then what is Muhammad? A common man? If if that's what you're saying, and not you specifically, but if if Muslims are saying he's a common man, okay, then we have no problem with that. He's just another <laughs> another old grumpy old man that did stupid things and we should have looked at him at a, as an example for anything if that's the case we, we agree right yeah we can definitely look at him at through a historical viewpoint if that's what you want but then a lot of stuff goes out the window another few points that make about the marriage that it doesn't make sense even from a logical perspective even in the seventh century okay and uh, Muhammad will agree with me because he used that same <laughs> reason to reject his daughter being married off to an old guy. We'll see this. It's a hilarious issue. Why did Muhammad, if, if marrying early was so common, why did Muhammad himself firstly wait till the age of 25 only to marry a widow that was 40? Then, uh, secondly, the other issue is that... <clears throat> It doesn't make any sense for getting a young child married to a guy who's in his 50s in an era where life expectancy isn't the greatest. So you're setting the child up for basically a relationship <clears throat> that is very unlikely to last long because the guy's going to die pretty soon. And when the guy will die, the family will be left without a dad, most likely, because the wife is going to be too young. Okay. She'll have two, three kids, but then the guy is going to be 60 and he's going to be dead soon. And if it's so common, then why just one? And one of the other is interesting why things... Why does he have not more child brides? Is before Muhammad and before Islam, we have civilizations upon civilizations who recognize that too early of a child marriage is actually very dangerous to women's health and the women themselves because maternal mortality i.e women dying during childbirth was a leading cause of death in women throughout <laughs> history and the younger you are the harder it is right so those civilizations actually had higher ages stipulated like 12 14 15 and some certain points 600 years before islam was around yeah and that was like the legal that wasn't the norm exactly and well we also see that if you do look at the cases in history we see this one thing uh is that the big leaders that did marry these very young children they were also not the norm they were the exception like these king that was 50 or 16 married this 12 year old girl in the what 15 16th century mm -hmm. he wasn't still the norm he was still the exception to the rule yeah, exactly. That's interesting. And he yeah. wasn't a prophet. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> a lot of times we miss out on this on this fact, especially Muslims, especially me as a Muslim and Muslims in general, miss out on the fact that the Middle East, Mecca, was not the whole world at that time. Meaning that, like the things that happened in Arabia, in many cases, were actually way behind the rest of the world. For example, mm -hmm. some of the scientific understandings of the time in were much more advanced in Greece, right? Like the Greek scientists were way ahead in terms of some of the laws that, in terms of some of the the laws for women's rights, and in terms of you know free slaves, you know treatment of slaves. All of these things are actually, in some cases, better than you would find in Islam, even though it's before Islam. Islam was not revolution. Islam has some things that are revolutionary i don't know revolutionary maybe that's the wrong word progressive for example zakat zakat's great i mean you can't complain about zakat but at the same time there's like so many awful things in islam that are just but ugly and just awful <laughs> just you know behind the times even at that time it was behind the times you mm -hmm. know so um yeah 